But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. From the most glorious creation, the Son, he expresseth the most glorious creator, Christ Jesus, taking occasion to help our understanding in grace by natural things. He teaches us thereby to make a double use of creation, corporal and spiritual. Out of the excellency of created things, he raises up our minds to consider the excellency of the Creator. And so if these things have beauty and strength and are comfortable, how much more is he that endureth these things with these qualities? Thus, as the rivers lead to the sea, so these created things should lead us to the glorious majesty of God. But the main observation is that Christ is the Son, S-U-N, of righteousness. For as by nature there was no guile found in his lips, so he is habitually and actually righteous. He is wisdom, justification, sanctification, and redemption. He is compared to the Son because, first, as all light was gathered into the body of the Son and from it is communicated to us, so it pleased God that in Him should the fullness of all excellency dwell. Colossians 1.19 Therefore, those that look for perfection out of Christ do look for light without the Son. Secondly, as there is but one Son, so there is but one Son of Righteousness. Therefore, what need is there for two heads or two husbands? One must needs be an adulterer. Christ doth all by his Spirit, who is his vicar. One needs no other vicar, though there were a thousand worlds more. Thirdly, as the sun is above in the firmament, so Christ is exalted up on high to convey his graces and virtues to all his people here below. He does so even as the sun conveys life and quickens the earth, yes, and all things thereon, though it is but one sun. And fourthly, as the sun works largely in all things here below, so doth Christ. Fifthly, as the sun is the fountain of light and the eye of the world, so Christ is the fountain of all spiritual light. He said, I am the light of the world. He said it of himself, John eight twelve. He was that light that enlightens the world, saith St. John of him, John 1, 9. And therefore Zacharias termeth him the day spring from on high, Luke 1, 78. Sixthly, as the sun directeth us whither to go and which way, so does Christ teach us to go to heaven and by what means, what duties to perform, what things to avoid, and what things to bear. Seventhly, as the sun is pleasant, Ecclesiastes 11.7, and darkness is terrible, so Christ is comfortable, for he makes all at peace where he comes and sends his spirit the comforter. Now he is in heaven. Therefore, as ignorance and error are expressed by darkness, so, on the other hand, joy and honor and knowledge, which bringeth it, is expressed by light. Esther 8.16 Christ is our director, our supporter. Without him, what are we? And what do we but glory in our shame? Eighthly, by the beams of the sun are conveyed influence to make things grow and to distinguish between times and seasons. Thus Christ, by his power, makes all things cheerful, and therefore is called the quickening spirit, 1 Corinthians 15.45. For he quickens the dead and dark soul, which, until Christ shines on us, is a dungeon of ignorance and unbelief. And as his spirit blows on our spirits, so also it works a spring in growth of grace or a summer in strength of zeal. Ninthly, the sun works these effects not by coming down to us, but by influence. And shall we then be so sottish as to imagine that Christ of necessity must come bodily in the sacrament to us or that there is no other work of the Spirit by that ordinance? 
Can the sun be thus powerful in operation by nature? And shall not this son of righteousness be more powerful by the influence of his spirit to comfort and quicken us, though he cometh not bodily down into a piece of bread? Tenthly, as the sun doth work freely, drawing up vapors to dissolve them into rain upon the earth to cherish it when it is dry, so doth Christ. He freely came from heaven to us and freely draws up our hearts to heaven, which cannot ascend thither but by his exhaling power. Christ is our lodestone that draws these iron heart hearts, hard hearts of ours upward, causing us to condemn this base world, counting it dross and dung. Eleventhly, as the sun shines upon all but doth not heat all, and so Christ is offered to all. He shines on all where the gospel cometh, but all are not enlightened, and all that are enlightened do not burn in love to him. Nay, some are more hardened by it, as it is the nature of the sun to harden some bodies. And twelfthly and lastly, as the sun quickens and puts life into dead creatures, so shall Christ, by his power, quicken our dead bodies and raise them up again when he shall come to judgment. And despite all these particulars, yet he is not every way like it. For the sun shines upon all alike. But Christ doth not thus, for many are in eternal darkness, despite this light. He is mercy, yet many are in misery.